The Finder application allows you to query a MongoDB database uh, without writing complex code and without writing complex syntax. So what I'll do is first I'll log into my database. It's uh, called Tweets. And as I log in, I'm going to see all the collections in my database on the left-hand side. So each one of these is a collection inside the MongoDB database. I can scroll through the, through the collections. When I want to start querying one of these collections, I simply click it. What I get on the left-hand side at the bottom is a cursor. So I'll see my documents inside my collection. And if I want to query something, say that I'm uh, looking at this and I want to query uh, all the tweets that are coming from any user in this location, whatever this is, I simply double click it. What that does is it adds this uh, condition here on the center, central part of the screen, as you see, and then it immediately runs the query. In this case, there's only one such document. Um, if I clear it and say, for example, show me all the tweets that are coming from any user who has a statuses count of over 812, what I'll do is I'll click the operator larger than, and then I'll click 812, so it adds the correct condition, and you can see it immediately ran the result set. I got back one document out of 27,960 documents, which all have a statuses count larger than 812. Um, I can keep on clicking. Every time I click, I add a different uh, condition. So, for example, if I want to add a condition that says the language of the tweet has to be English, I double-click that. You see it added here. It, it, it here, lang is... Actually, that's not what I wanted. What I wanted to do is an operator of equal. So I'll click it again. Adds the condition, runs the query, and I can keep doing this. Um, I could also add projections on the fly, so instead of uh, just double-clicking the value, I can alt-click something. So if I alt-click text, for example, you can see it added it here at the uh, select area. It's a text colon one, uh, so that's a projection, and therefore what I get back for each document is only the text. If I keep on, if I also want the language, I double-click the language. If I want the user location, I double-click the user location and so on. So adding projections is very quick. Adding sword is exactly the same thing. I do a control click. Uh, so for example, if I want to do this, but I want to sort it by the uh, ID, or maybe maybe actually by the by the statuses count of the user. So I want the, the users with a higher statuses count first. So first let me add it as a projection, so we'll see it. And then let me uh, click descending and control click the value over here. And what it did was, as you can see, uh, it ran it. And what it will show me is my data, but sorted by the statuses count. So you can see all this uh, ad hoc queries that I'm doing are all very natural, very simple. Uh, if I click a query tab, I will always get the full query. So. Uh, if I now want to take and copy-paste it into my application or copy-paste it into uh, a test script, I can do that. And, you know, it's all very simple. Uh, any, any user can do this. Uh, the learning curve is very short. Um, the next type of user interface that, that the Finder provides is even simpler. Okay, so let me uh, clear everything out and start from scratch. The second user interface is one that is, uh, you know, kind of like a Google search type interface. So there are three input areas, an area for a select, which maps to a projection, an area with a where that maps to uh, kind of a match, and an area with a sort. And all I do is I start typing things in. So for example, say that I want to uh, get all the tweets that have the word great in them. So I simply type in text, and then I'll type in great, and I'll do it as a regular expression in this example. And what you'll see now is that the result set now includes only tweets that have a text with the word great in them. And I could keep on doing this. I can say, you know, suppose that I only want to see tweets uh, coming from a certain uh, city. So I can do user and location. And really what's important here, what you see is that the menus that are constructed are constructed automatically for the user. So, you know, let me back up. 
when I start with nothing and I just put in a, a letter U, um, the system knows uh, a little bit about the metadata of the collections. Again, not not the explicit schema because there is none, but the implicit schema, the real fields that exist within this document. And what it does is it auto-completes things. So, so all the fields start with a letter U are now gonna gonna be shown. And if I, you know, after the U, as I'm typing, every everything that I type in, the menu is adjusted. So the minute that I type in an L, um, then the menu is adjusted for only the uh, fields that start with user.l, so in this case it's user location. And then it gives me a set of uh, uh, values that are samples that exist inside this collection. So in this collection there are tweets coming from all kinds of uh, these locations. So say that I want to see everything that comes in from, I don't know, Florida. So in this case what I'm, what I'm seeing really is that there are no tweets that come from a user located in Florida that say uh, grade in the text, but I can delete, if I delete this uh, text query, then you know I still have the query that says uh, user location is Florida, so there are 126 tweets coming out of Florida. And, uh, and I can of course mix and match things. I can, I can go into each one of these and I can double click on something. So say I want to create all the ones created at exactly on Saturday, double click this, in this case I'm only going to get one. So it's a combination of things on the facet search side and on the point and click search side. Let me delete this and go back to the facets and again just uh, to complete this type of query, everything that I type in, it's the same same capabilities as with the point and click. So for example if I don't want the whole document every time, I just want text, I say text, it updates to show me the results set with only text. I can then add user, not location, so I can see where these things are coming from. Uh, not surprisingly, they're all going to come from Florida right now. I can add user, create it at, whatever I want. I can get this data as JSON. I can look at it as a tabular display, so I can open this up in this type of display. Um, so all the data is really simple to get at, really simple to query, uh, everything of course is, is then translated to a query in MongoDB. Everything can be saved, so I can save this search, I can save these queries, I can export these queries, right? I can click this button. Get, get something that then I can take anywhere else that I want. Um, so that's it, thanks for joining. Uh, that was a very simple uh, demo of the Finder application uh, within JSON Studio. JSON Studio is a suite of applications and tools uh, around MongoDB. Um, if you're interested uh, in more details, please visit jsonstudio.com and uh, look at the other uh, demos. Thank you.